Hello everybody, welcome back to Neo 2. In this one we're going to be taking a look at uh, kind of mid slash late game uh, building for mages. Now what I mean by mid slash, game, slash late game is you're getting towards the second half of your first playthrough. Uh, real kind of full on builds aren't really going to stop being a thing until you get to New Game Plus. So just bear that in mind, you're going to see people like running around with all sorts of crazy gear. Um, that just isn't going to be available to you in, the, in your first run of the game. So let's just take a look at things. Now I'm going to bring up the menu and we're going to work left to right. Um, so first up then is equipment. Now part of the way through the uh, the third act, I think it's after the first or the second mission, you'll be able to start crafting on Mio gear. So let me just show you guys this in the blacksmith. So that you can see that it kind of just, it, <laughs> it's a bit strange because it kind of just appears there as do quite a lot of armor sets. They kind of just start appearing. Uh, some of them obviously come along with uh, smith with smithing texts, but the Onmyo one just kind of appears here. Uh, we're using this just basically for the for the Onmyo, Onmyo magic power. Now of course if there's something else that you want to have on, feel free to put it in. If for example you decide you want a bit of key, it's, it's all good, you can do that. Um, the weight is, is fine, you'll get a little bit of extra defense, it's not going to make much difference. Um, but overall that is our set as a mage. And obviously you can kind of you can refresh it if you want to do different as well. You can look however you want. But uh, we're sticking with vanilla for the sake of this, uh, just so that we've got like complete and utter uh, things in terms of uh, where you want to be putting points, like with, with Toyo here. Uh, top of your list should be the selling price. This is just going to get you more cash as you sell stuff to her, uh, which I highly recommend doing often. So to make sure you get all of your points in this, and then fill the rest of it. I, I feel like purchasing uh, price discount is a little bit irrelevant because you're not really going to buy anything from her. Forging cost is your next most important, and then, uh, well, I don't really care about additional stock or purchase price. Really, we're just going to use it for, for selling stuff to get gold, and then we're going to use it for forging. So. That's all of that. So I've shown you where to forge it. Um, obviously, you temper your stuff here to to get yourself and change change your abilities around. I got really really lucky in this extension switch wave because it came with the uh, attack bonus magic. So it already scales B plus with magic, and it gets it gets further B minus, um, which is a bit mental. Uh, other things that you're going to be wanting on there though are things like purity. So. Uh, you'll find that you have uh, two really main choices. You have imbue corruption and imbue pur purity. Uh, purity basically does more key damage, which is particularly um, potent against yokai that can't regenerate key, so it will damage the maximum key and stuff if you hit them with it. So that's really good. Um, but I'm rolling this one just for the for the, for the raw damage of it. Uh, and you can see, it, and, and I and I get that uh, this one isn't max. This one here is max familiarity, but you can see kind of the difference in in like even ten levels later, it's still kind of out damage and stuff. So it's just mental. Absolutely mental. Uh, so back to just kind of looking at the gear over here uh, and looking at some of the things that you're going to want to have on there, particularly if you're going to be doing what I'm going to show you guys uh, in this advice video. Uh, you want to try and get uh, one of each type of accumulation of your elements on here. So we've got burn. In fact, I've got burn on here twice, so I couldn't uh, I couldn't roll a saturation one. Uh, a little bit of one of one with the electro electricity one. Don't, try not to get it mixed up with sh with uh, paralysis. Shock accumulation is the one, is the one that you want. It's gonna well, it's proc your um, your debuffs on the enemy. Obviously, procking two of those on one enemy is gonna cause um, I think it's called discord. Could be confused, something like that anyway. But um, once you get on there, it's gonna cause you to do double damage. So having having that on uh, is just gonna gonna give you give you way more damage as you're doing that. Uh, other things that you're gonna want on your on your gear then. So let's have a look at what I've got. Uh, obviously, my gear isn't perfect. Uh, just bear in mind that. Bear that in mind. And you don't want to invest too much in your gear. You just want it to be good. You don't want it to be amazing because it's going to change often. Um, so obviously, everything's going to have on your power because we've gone with gone with headpieces. Uh, look is good. Uh, just because that's, that's going to improve the drops that you're going to get from just all round. It's just going to make everything a little bit easier. Uh, I've kept a lot of key, uh, but I'd say the things to be on the lookout for the most are un untouched on me. Uh, but if you're going to if you're going to go for that. You want at least ten percent, and if if you can, you just want it on everything. Uh, it's very much an all or nothing stat in my experience. Like having having five percent of it's going to do nothing, whereas if you had um, like the equivalent, what the three percent across the five pieces, and then and then like five percent on each of these, that's going to be like what twenty five percent. And the crazy thing is, obviously, because it, because it's a cu a cumulative uh, gain, right? You're going to get twenty five percent of the twenty five percent of the twenty five percent. It like works out at like fifty to sixty percent extras casts on everything that you do. Uh, the only caveat with it. Is you have to have full health. Um, oh no, 
I didn't, oh no, so you don't need four health. I thought you did. Never mind. Uh, ignore that. Uh, in addition, then, uh, kind of for the same reason as look, it's a good idea to have item drop, in my opinion. Uh, Amrit is also useful. Um, you should have faster winded recovery on one piece of gear. You don't need more than one, uh, but it just means if you get caught out with, with low key, you're going to recover faster, so that's good. And then, probably where you're going to get the most mileage is uh, is on your on your accessories here, in my opinion, because it seems easier to roll the um, roll the accumulation bonuses on here. Uh, in addition, keep an eye out for defense bonus magic. It's uh, just going to make us a little bit tougher. It's not essential. I still die in like one or two hits anyway, so it's prob probably a bit of a waste. Um, but the most important one out of these two is elemental damage, because that's obviously where uh, we're going to get most of our damage from in the magic tree. Uh, so we've looked a little bit at the, at the stats here, so you guys can just kind of see the things that we're going for. Um, I didn't get anything else that was super amazing. So, uh, but just bear in mind when you are making your gear, you want things that stack. Essentially, Neo is all about stacking small bonuses to make a big difference. Um, so just bear that in mind. Obviously, we've got all of our skills and stuff down here. We'll go over skills later. Uh, I've been playing around the Shikigami. It's actually quite strong. Probably going to keep that on. Uh, what I would probably recommend is um, trying to spec for two stack two elements when you go into a mission. Um, so what I mean by that is you're going to acquire enough skills to get lots of different elements, um, but I would aim to have two on you when you go into a mission and try to leave out the one that stuff is strong to. So for example, if you're doing pervading waters, most of the stuff there is either resistant or immune to water, so take electric and fire. Cool. Equipment done. Items don't care. Guardian spirits. So later on in the game you're able to equip two guardian spirits. Um, Obviously, pick the ones that you feel are going to work the best for you. Uh, but there are two things here uh, that I think work well for me. Um, there's probably more optimal ways of doing it, but I just really like the bonuses that we get from Ami Notori. Ami no Mitori. I'll say the name right eventually. But uh, essentially, I really like the running speed and I really like the Q recovery. Uh, and the 20% lightning bonus is amazing. It just makes our lightning attacks super strong. The other good one, uh, it seems to me anyway, is the um, anima bonus for elemental attacks. That means when we put elemental uh, buffs onto our weapons, which I'm going to show you how to do that super, super awesomely in a minute, um, we will gain extra anima, which allows you to use your bullets, which is kind of cool. Uh, obviously, it's important for um, burst counters as well. Uh, there's other stuff in here. I'm pretty sure there's one that gives you extra water damage as well. Where are we? Water damage, yeah, there we go. But it's of the phantom type. <clears throat> so, um, I really don't like the, fa the, the phantom burst counter, so kind of I usually tend to avoid that. Uh, what could be a good idea is having that paired with the with the lightning one, because what you'll find is when you where's the button? It's not let me show you the button. But essentially, you see the little kind of circular fox symbol uh, when you equip two guardian spirits. Uh, that is the ability that you are going to get half of. So. Uh, this is my front one, this is the one I've got it equipped mainly, and then I have half of the anima bonus from that elemental attack A, which works out as B, but because I'm going to get some uh, some extra in a minute anyway, it, it works out pretty good, I end up having an A anyway. But um, just bear that in mind, so you could actually go with this at the front if you want, more anima bonus, you could have extended elemental weapon if you're, if you're a fan of that, um, and then you could just have the light damage from there, or you could mix it with the, with the butterfly, uh, to have water and electric boosted. Which could be interesting. It'd be about to be ten percent lightning, fifteen percent water. Not bad. Um, probably a better way to spread it rather than leaning so much on the electricity. So skills then. Um, I don't feel like there's too much for me to say here, other than you want to prioritise this when you're in the mid game. You probably probably get this quite early, but you want, you want to prioritise this, uh, which is the extra five capacity that allows us to equip more stuff. Um, and I really like the debuffs. So things like Divigorate. Uh, weakness and sloth. If you get all three of those on something, you've pretty much debilitated it. Even bosses aren't really going to hurt you very much. Um, and as long as you've got those up, they are going to uh, suffer against you, which is nice. Because they'll basically deal less damage, take more damage, um, and they'll move really, really slowly. Particularly if you're going to bring like a friend in. Um, it's just going to mean that they can wail on them as well, which is great. Um, I've been toying with the Shikigami. They're actually pretty good. Um, really nice for, for procking um, state summons on stuff as well, which is pretty good. So you could like fire three of those out. Whilst it's coming towards you, you could fire um I don't know, say the water stuff at it, and then have 
to um, two stats on something, and then when you go into attack it, we take a double damage. Lovely. Uh, Shifling. I feel like most of this is self-explanatory, but um, I think most of note is this stuff. I like the stuff that allows us to to extend our yokai shift. Uh, obviously, the one you want to prioritize in Samurai is um, give an extra magic, mag guess extra damage based on magic to a skill, uh, and then picking your favorite skill so that you can improve the damage on it. And then uh, basically all this stuff just for this is this is general stuff. I suppose probably don't really need to talk about this stuff, but um, I just like having all of this on so that our bows and the guns do what's supposed to do when we're sniping stuff out. Moving on to the switch sleeve. Uh, the only real essential stuff, in my opinion, is this stuff on this side. Um, I like the switch stance moves are amazing. Uh, this obviously isn't necessarily specifically to mages, but I feel like most wages are going to be using the switch glaive. So I'll point out that these are amazing. Uh, try to get used to using them, just because just because they're really really cool and do pretty good damage if you can if you can get them off properly. In addition, uh, I usually take the uh, extra damage in the rear and the. Um, the extra defense if you're on low health, just kind of stop you from dying. Other than that, uh, go for the key. Obviously, that's, a, that's just brilliantly uh, convenient to have extra key without having to level up, which is very nice. That's pretty much it for the skills. Um, I feel like there's not that much for us to say, other than I suppose one important one for us in particular is to go for the 10% uh, recurrent damage. This does affect the fire damage for um, when you scorch something, so. Just an extra 10% out of that, it's pretty, pretty cool. So kill customization, uh, I haven't really done that much to mine. I've just put the uh, extra magic on the, on the switchblade retribution because I really like the mid stance. Uh, and then finishing off with the, the big hit, which, which just does extra damage for that, which is cool. Moving on to our stats then, guys. So this is level 90. Uh, now I'm aware that you guys in the mid game will start at level 90, but this is where you kind of want to work to. Uh, from the previous video's uh, perspective, I was kind of just basically splitting these um, with magic, so having magic. Slowly power its way up until we get um, constitution and heart to 30. This is basically so that we have um, some decent survivability. We are quite fragile as a mage, just gives us extra health, extra key. Um, I still haven't tested yet. I'm going to do it in New Game Plus, whether or not courage is a better replacement for heart, just because... Rather than having a bigger base pool, you'll have better recovery, but also uh, you'll get three points of onmyo uh, magic power for each point that you put in there so you could actually have an extra 75 onmyo power uh, if you can go without the go without the key the only problem with that is um when it comes to fighting you, you may struggle a little bit but i don't know how well that, that kind of copes so that's about the stats then um obviously you can see my proficiency stuff here where we all end up and uh, all of the bonuses that we've got in there uh, i feel like it's important to actually point out the titles um you guys see the stats down at the bottom, kind of what I've prioritised. So we have prioritised in the uh, in the Agio tree, the Soul Core drop rate, just because that's going to be handy for something I'm going to show you guys in another video. I'm going to show you some guys something in another video, uh, that's going to be important for that, so just bear that in mind. Instead of Jokai Shift, because it's fun, uh, minus 4.5% uh, elemental damage taken, which is Maiden. Anima Charge is actually going to be quite important for us, with some of the stuff we're going to be doing, uh, as is the plus 0.9 Anima. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a mouthful, but... Um, you guys can see at the bottom just kind of how that's going. Uh, onto the bottom gear then. Most of this one's a bit more self-explanatory. Uh, elixir efficacy, 4.5% more uh, health from elixirs. I think it gives us like close to 15% extra now, which is pretty good. Uh, plus 20 on your power, pretty pretty obvious for the mage build. Plus 5% to keep recovery speeds, just going to keep us in the fight a bit longer. 45, plus 45 natural key and 90 health. Um, there are whole levels worth of stats in that life and key, so <laughs> that's just that's just great for us. Just make sure you make sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, so that is it for this menu. <laughs> Still more to show. Uh, for those of you as well that uh, want to reset those points, because maybe you put some somewhere that you don't care, don't really, don't really like. You can in fact trade with this guy. Uh, I've used a couple already, so it'll be less for you. I think the first one's like 800, and that'll reset all of the times. So. Um, it's pretty cool. We've also got the Book of Reincarnation if you guys want to want to want to try out different stats. Although I recommend kind of saving them for later. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until uh, New Game Plus and then make like a save copy. And then I'm gonna play, play around with some stuff, see what I, what I think like a final build should look like. Um, in addition, uh, you will eventually come across a. I should go back into the tea house as well. You will eventually come across being able to join a clan. I don't want to go into battles. I want to go into transfer. So I can show you guys what these look like. 
many different clans. Uh, you are going to see that uh, they all do different things. You can donate stuff to get the special rewards. The teacups that you see, uh, they give you different bonuses depending on what they give. I'll show you those in the hut in a moment. However, the one for us is the Akechi. Starts out as plus 40 on new power. Note that I said plus 40 is what it starts out at. Um, as you stay with the clan and participate in it and gain glory, so as you kill more and more of the Red Revenants, as you um, as your Benevolent Grave gets used, all that kind of stuff, that is going to rise. Which is why I keep on trying to say in the walkthrough that it's really important that people use each other's uh, Benevolent but never agrees, so just trying to encourage that as much as I can. Um, and that's just obviously going to give you a flat flat bonus. Uh, so to show you guys, where, I can't remember where it shows you now. Clan battles, I think it's in here. Yeah, so uh, because of my rank as Minister, I get plus 60 to that 40, so I get 100 on me power, which is a lot. Uh, and that will continue to rise as we gain ranks. So uh, just keep that in mind. And just, uh, just make sure you're trying to keep that rising, because it is... It's going to have a big effect on majors, basically. Uh, dojo, don't need you right now. Blacksmith, don't need you right now. Shrine, hut. So yeah, I do want to show the hut. Um, so obviously, benevolent graves. Get your stuff. It's cool. Uh, remodel hut. So it's worth pointing out, T utensils here. Um, depending on the gear that you get, it will obviously just kind of give you bonuses. So I've had some teacups. That's going to up my Splendor. You can see the three different stats and then what they do below them. So Splendor gives eight, is giving me extra luck. Simplicity is giving me extra money acquired. Eccentricity will see, mean that you see more T utensils dropped more often. Uh, you can do it manually. So select placement. I can select a shelf. I can decide what I want to put on it. I didn't have any eccentric teacups. It's a shame. I've not really been farming them. So it's not, it's not a huge thing. But just bear them in mind. Uh, so moving on next then, we need to go into the shrine for the next bit. Uh, so I've already spoken about Guardian Spirits, we've got the Aminotori, and then in second place we have the Tengen Kajaku for the uh, Anima bonus on Elemental Attack. So like I say, that is going to be important for this. So when we look at tuned soul cores, you guys are free to use whatever you want, um, but I'm going to show you guys a suggestion here that's going to make things super cool. Uh, and that is using the Oni B Soul Cores, okay? So there are th actually three different types, and you can, in fact, well, when, when you get to the end of the game, you'll actually be able to um, equip all three different types. Uh, what this is going to allow you to do, and it doesn't show it very well there, is you can use these to buff your weapon uh, with the element of your choice, uh, depending on um, which Oni B that you've got on there. So the Infernal will give you fire. I don't know why it makes them all separate, it's really weird. And then the uh, the other two you get water and electricity. So for the sake of some anima, you can you can buff your weapon with electricity, um, and then you can actually not only are you going to buff it with electricity when you max them out, they give you plus five percent elemental damage each. So putting the two ones can give you plus ten percent more damage to all of your spells as well. Um, <laughs> plus the extra, and obviously that's all going to go onto the the elemental buff they actually put on the weapon, which is quite cool. It's uh, so kind of just to show how all of this comes together. Then I've still got some points to use. I'll use those in a bit. Because uh, I think that's everything that I've got equipped. Um, I'm going to do a video on how to farm the Oni B Soul Cores because they were. It was quite painful to get all three until I kind of found a place where we can, where we can get them nice and easy. So that will be in the next video. Uh, it's just kind of to show you guys then um, how you can kind of test out how your how your stuff is performing and why I I'm kind of liking it. Although <laughs> unfortunately the training ground is kind of. I don't know, a bit underpowered, some of the stuff doesn't last very long. Uh, and it's not going to show you the anima bonus build-up, which is the uh, the most unfortunate thing here. But basically, what you're going to want to do is... Wham, now I'm electric. Ooh, if you don't, don't go down. There we go, so now it's electrified. Wham, now I'm fire. So obviously, if it was a bit longer there, we could have had the scorch build-up and it'd be straight into Discord. So, electric. Fire. That's just green, right? And again. Electric. Fire. Because if I pulled up straight to Discord. Down. Nice and easy. Uh, so to show you guys the chicken army then, let's set a couple of these out. It's quite funny. It's really insane out. Good to run into it. Oh, come in. Come hither. 
Boom. Straight with the fire. Should have switched to electric. But yeah, I, just, I really like the move. It's so good. Being able to switch between elements like that is um, is monumental. Obviously, with the extra an anima size we've got, I think we can we can switch twice and still have quite a bit left. Uh, so hopefully, this is helpful to you guys. Just kind of give people a bit of direction uh, in terms of where to stand, spend stat points, how you want your how you want your character to look. And obviously, note this is only a suggestion as well. Um, you very much could min-max this a little bit more. You probably could stand if you wanted to do more magic damage and have five less in constitution and heart and have 51 magic instead. It would would boost your damage output for for be more fragile. It's entirely up to you guys. Um, and I think. That is everything I want to say about building a mage for early game. Uh, I feel like the only the only B stuff is completely game changing for me because now I don't need to to have um, jutsu slots taken up by by my buffs. I can just do that straight through the straight through the cores, and it's faster, and more effective as well, which is just mental. Um, so in any case, guys, I'll end the video here. In the next one, I'll show you guys where to get the only B as its own little little um, farming video. So I will catch you all in the next video. Hopefully this was uh, this was nice. Thanks for watching.